What's up guys? This is Austin with Hot Rod Heaven back with another video. I'm here with Billy today to talk to him a little bit about his ride. He actually knew Jay. You saw that video is the Nova we did. I was like, Billy, dude, let's do this car. It's super unique, super cool, a little bit different than what we do on the channel. So Billy, tell me a little bit about the car that we have in front of us. Yeah, so essentially it's a 1964 Chevy Bel Air wagon and it's all patina. We found it in Ocala, went to get it, and essentially we fell in love with it and we had in our mind what we wanted to do with it right away. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. And what kind of made you want to get this car here to begin with? So I've always loved the 1964 Chevy car and I've always loved the station wagon, anything wagon related, I've always loved it. Same, dude, I'm a big wagon guy, I love yeah, it. Yeah, so essentially when I saw the post, I was like, man, I love this car. Like I had bought it in my head without even looking at the car. Yeah, so awesome. as soon as I saw it, I fell in love with it. And it's funny, you were, you were telling me a little story off camera when I first met you. The reason you got this car, you had a truck before and you kind of grew out of it. Can you tell me a little bit about that story there? Yeah, so the story with that is we had a 1955 Chevy truck. It was called a Gringo Super. It's over in Greece right now. That's crazy. So man. that was a truck that we build as a family project and it's my wife and I and our two kids. So when they were little, it worked fine. Yeah. But over time, it was just starting to get tight in the cab. So we're looking at another project. So we sold that and that's the reason we got into a station wagon because we were looking for something of a car or a station wagon, a van, something along those lines so we could all do and everybody's comfortable. Yeah, for sure. And, and that's something cool that I really like the story behind this car is you do it with your family. You you like doing this stuff, obviously, but you want your family to be a part of it, which is super cool. Yeah, so we're on our fourth generation of car stuff at this point. My grandfather, um, we're from Puerto Rico originally. My grandfather had a speed shop. My dad worked there when he was younger, and my dad, when he grew up, he had race cars and old cars, and he's always been in the car scene. My brother and I grew up with that, and that's all we knew. So when my wife met me, she already knew that I loved cars and motorcycles and stuff. So she knew and then our kids are just head over heels for it too. They, they love it. So the motor we got in here and the transmission, I actually owned before owning the vehicle. I did an LS swap on the old truck we had. I built the motor and it was just kind of one of those where I, I never looked back. So I bought a 2001 Chevy Silverado running. It was T-boned. It's a stock LS. All we did was reseal everything. For, I hate oil leaks. Yeah. I just, it, it sucks. So we resealed everything. We did headers. I did an F-body intake and oil pan, but it was essentially to make it fit in the car because the truck motor is not gonna fit in here. It's a 60E transmission. Again, stock, it's rebuilt. Um, we put a shift kit in it and a couple of the servos. Crap that goes wrong in the 60E. But other than that, it's just more reliability. It wasn't performance oriented. Stock yeah. converter, again, I just wanted the overdrive because I knew I was gonna run little wheels and tires. Sure. So I just didn't want the thing to be screaming at 50. You know what I mean? I wanted to cruise 70. I want to just bend on the highway in the fast lane, just blowing yeah. people's doors off. And they're like, what just passed me? Yeah. I love it. That's that's That was the goal. The front accessories are by ICT. And that was just more aesthetics. Like I like how it looks. Other than that, F body water pump and then just exhaust. And that's it. It's a stock motor. I just want a reliability. Get in, go, cruise it. Exactly. You know, the four speed automatic. So that's all I wanted. You said you have some headers on there. What is the exhaust running through the car the exhaust is just glass packs because i wanted the sound so when you look at the car running and you hit it you it sounds nostalgic but when you lift the hood you're like it's got an ls i don't get it two and a quarter and then i dumped it right in front of the tires because it wasn't going past the axle i tried over on the side under and there's just so much crap back there that it was just dumped right in front of the rear tires i think it's super cool too that you built this right here in this garage which that's what I like the most about doing videos like this is guys building their mm -hmm. cars in their garage. Yeah, that was important to me and it's important to all my builds. I get asked a lot, hey, did you buy it done? Who built it for you? And I take pride in saying I built it. Let's talk about the wheels and tires a little bit. Tell me what wheels and tires are you rocking on the car? So this is actually the third set of wheels I've had in this car. I knew I was going to spent a lot of money on a, a certain wheel I wanted. So I was between Dayton and True Spoke. Dayton is really hard to get by unless you know someone. True Spoke, you can call them. It's still months for build time. Yeah. So one night, one of my buddies, uh, Blue, thank you, Blue, <laughs> he calls me up and he's just like, hey man, I've got some 14.7 cross lace Daytons that I'm trying to sell. Do you know anybody? I was like, 
dude, I was literally gonna call True Spoke and order a set of wheels this yeah. week. So he's just like, hey man, I got them here. You don't have to wait the 10 months for build time. I love this wheel and it kind of goes to the look of the car, but the cross lace and the, again, I didn't want 13 inch. 13 inch looks sick on lowriders, but this isn't a lowrider. I mean, even though people consider it a lowrider, it's a mix of a bunch of things, but I wanted the 14 inch so that way I can run the bigger, a little bit bigger tire so I can cruise on the highway. I called Coker Tire and uh, they got me some 520s, which it's a bias fly tire, so it's kind of sketchy at times, but they hold the load of the vehicle correctly. They actually hold the load of the vehicle more than a, than a radial I figured out. And it gives you that old school 60s, 70s lowrider look. What are you rocking as far as the suspension goes? Cause I, this thing can scrape. So it's oh, pretty yeah. sick. So the suspension on this car, you know, a lot of my friends have the lowriders with hydraulics and they're always giving me a hard time. And it's just like, dude, what do you have bags on that? Yeah. Air ride is always what I've known. And I love both things, but I wanted to do something that I know and I could, I could just ride it low and not have to worry about something that I really don't know a lot of, which is hydraulics. So we went with air ride and I did a pretty quick setup, half inch everything. And everything's like 400, 500 PSI proof. I don't run it that high, but you can make it boogie on air ride. But it's got tubular A arms. I wanted the new modern ride for it. So I got the A arms, I put them on and I quickly realized that the bottom A arm, it's set up to have a little bit of negative camber for better handling. So I wasn't really too concerned about like road racing the car or anything like that. So I actually sectioned the bottom A arms one inch just to kick it out and give it just that cool positive camber yeah, yeah, yeah. low rider look. Yeah. Um, but it's not crazy to the point where it's like poking out the car. And on the back suspension, when I got the car, I knew I wanted to C-notch it. It just didn't sit low enough for me. When you C-notch the car and the actual axle travels into the frame, it changes the geometry. Okay. So it's got a three link, factory three link, but they're all tubular. So I had to make my own upper arm. So that way when, it, when it's aired out, and laid out all the way on the ground, that arm goes all the way over the axle. So I had to cut, make a tunnel for it. So it, it was hitting on the floor itself. We had to reinforce the chassis, C-notch it obviously. So it changed up a lot of things, but the end result was just a look that I was going for. Yeah, man, it looks incredible. Like honestly, when you're cruising down the road, just it low, in the back and a little lifted on the front. I think that just looks so freaking sweet, dude. Right, so. right, right. Yeah, when I first got it, people were like, man, drag it. And you know, it's just kind of like one of those, like, no, I'm not in high school anymore. I'm yeah. not gonna drag this thing. I got to the point where I don't care anymore, man. Somebody yeah. looks at me the wrong way, I'm, I'm dragging on them. Yeah, <laughs> hey, sometimes you gotta do it, man. Let's talk about the paint on this thing because it's a cool little mix that you got going on here. This is the original patina of the car, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the car was in Ocala, it was in a field. When I saw it, it had the right patina. The idea was not to paint it. So what I did was uh, my wife and I scotch bright the whole thing and we used Penetrol. I didn't want to clear coat it and make it look shiny and I didn't want to put oil. So we used Penetrol, which is not an oil. It's actually like paint itself. Okay. And I mean, do you pour water on it and it just bounces right oh, off awesome. uh, just to preserve where it's at now. I don't want it to get any worse but I didn't want to make it look super shiny either. And then what about the roof? Cause honestly, dude, this is what I think catches a lot of attention. You first walk up on it, you see the cool patina, you see some cool pinstriping, and then you look at the roof. Dude, this is honestly probably one of my favorite things besides the interior, which we are going to get to. <laughs> But tell me a little bit about the roof there. What was the idea? The, the roof that? was the first thing we did. When we bought the car, we literally had it in our possession for two weeks before I went over to my buddy Jason's house. He started getting into metal flake. And when he saw the roof, he's like, dude, let me have the car. Let me go to town on it. So it's a cool feature because people walk up on the car and they're looking at the, all the little details. And then when they look up, the roof just smacks them in the face and they're like, what the heck? Yeah, that's what happened to me. <laughs> Again, it's a mixture of a bunch of things. A lot of the true low riders, they have a lot of metal flake and a lot of artwork on the vehicle and that's what we wanted you know what i mean so between the wheels the tires and the roof and, and some of the things we did it's just like a combination of everything but holding the lowrider look in it somehow i think it looks great dude i think it's a perfect balance of of like kind of your own style but also kind of representing the lowriders from that era too let's let's go ahead and jump into the interior what was the inspiration behind this? Yeah, so it's street rods, essentially. Yeah. I love street rods. I, I love the fact that people put a white interior on a cool car. Yeah. I've always loved white interiors. And when we did the roof, I was like, man, I got to incorporate green metal flake into the car somehow. And the guy that did the actual seats for me in the door panels, he has like, dude, I got green metal flake here. I was like, oh, just surprise me, do something. Yeah. So white and green, man, just because I've always loved, I, there's just something about a white interior. You walk up on it and it's just glowing. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I didn't want to do all white, so that's why we did some of the green stuff. I'm just looking in here with the dash too, it looks so awesome. And I love even how you did it 
with the steering wheel too, which is oh, super yeah. freaking cool. Yeah, that's cool. a Moon Eyes steering wheel. I've always loved those. I've always run those on my car. It's just a nice feel to the grip. And when the green metal flag again, it just went with a the theme. What about the gauges that you're running on the car there? So they're all digital gauges. I wanted a little bit of new technology, but I didn't want to do the factory dash. You know, you could spend $800,000 on the aftermarket dash, which yeah. comes with all the sending units and everything, but that'd be too easy for me. And of course I did it to myself, right? I found a piece of aluminum, I machined it to give it that look, and then just put all the gauges on things that I thought were important to monitor, you know, on the air ride stuff and all the engine stuff. Well, if that wraps it up, I say that we go ahead and get a camera in the car and go for a cruise. What you think? Yeah, awesome, man, let's do it. All right, let's go. actually super comfortable it's like I feel like I am sitting on a couch chilling hard like yeah dude you can lounge in this for sure man yeah especially like, like when you're on the highway on the little tires and then like how the how the car is set up you're just like swaying all over it's just fuck it's a cool ride you know yeah no that's cool honestly now that I'm thinking about it this reminds me I'm sure you've seen like the cars movie like Lightning McQueen this his name is Ramon, Ramon. in the movie yeah, yeah dude yeah, this yeah, is yeah. A, that was my favorite car in the movie. Yeah. yeah, like when they did, it's geek mode, but when they do the road for the first time and he's just like, and starts dragging, I was like, oh! I was like, yes, I love this movie. This looks like something he would have like in the car, bro. This is so cool. Hey. I was actually about to ask, do you get a lot of people like, thumbs up and you and stuff oh a hundred percent man it, it's like a lot of your videos and I, I think i heard it with the guy with the cobra we related to that i was like oh dude i saw your car at the waterford show i was there and he's like oh no way okay and we were relating he's just like he showed a picture to some of my boys that work with me uh -huh. and they're like man like what is it like driving that car and I, I look at him i'm like you guys have no idea it's every red light the gas station it's not just like pump and go it's it's yeah. a 20 minute thing yeah. and especially like if you go to like a parts store you know, those are car guys that are going in there that just want to work on their own stuff. Yeah. You know, they don't want to take it to a mechanic to, to get somebody else to work on it. Uh -huh. So they come out and they appreciate it. Um, especially the guys that know this kind of car. They're like, dude, you put in some work in this? Yeah. Where like to somebody else, it's just like, oh, it's, it's a cool car, you know, that's it. My thing is like sitting at a red light, looking over and having somebody smiling. Yeah. Just because sure. they look at it and they're like, it just makes them smile. That's, yeah. that's an awesome feeling, you yeah, know what I mean? Totally. Dude, that thing, it kind of gets up for what it is. It's just a stock LS. Dude. I didn't even open it up. Like, there's no cam. No, no, no. Yeah, I didn't want yeah. anything. You know what I mean? I just wanted it to look cool when I popped the hood. And oh. people were like, oh, dude, an LS? I'm like, yeah, dude. I'm not going to spend money on an old yeah. motor. I'm going to put an LS because it's just, God, they're, they're Legos, man. Uh -huh. Like, GM figured it out with this thing. Like, Coyote like and... Um, and LS, like, dude, those those motors are figured out. Yeah, like, yeah. why even mess with anything else? Yeah, dude. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And Billy, thank you so much for oh, doing this with me, no man. No problem. I had it was so my much pleasure. fun. This car is so cool. Just the low and slow, and it's just, man, this is such a cool car, and it's different. So I appreciate you a lot. That's dude. why we built it, man, to have fun in it. So yeah. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, no worries. Of course. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you like this video, subscribe, leave a comment. And we'll see you next time.